you first of all what should i call you like Udyan. nuclear or odian you can call me odian do people mostly call you odian uh they don't really care somebody calls me nuclear somebody calls me odian like the first year uh, of me being with oml i think 90% of the people just called me nuclear but i'm easy with it like whatever so you respond to both yeah so let's begin by defining what you do uh, you've been called the number one dj in india <laughs> uh, you've said yourself that you don't like your music to be labeled as edm you said it's a genre on to into itself so yeah. what do you mean by that edm is electronic dance music uh, my music is dance music but not uh, like the face of edm is mostly the house music which is uh which you can find on youtube or wherever like it's like in your faces there my style of music uh revolves around a lot of different genres um indian music and i've done stuff with like sri lankan music um uh, folk music and punjabi music and tamil music um uh, also reggae a lot of bass music so it's a mix of so many different genres that it's very difficult to pinpoint which particular genre it is uh If you will ask me to give it a name, I'll call it dance music, bass music. Uh, but that's about it. I I don't think it's uh, wise to actually give it a name. And the thing is that once you're labeled, you're labeled. You know. And the thing is that now, because uh, when I am on stage, I play so many different st- other styles of music as well within my set uh, that people are now sort of conditioned to listen to each and every different style of music. when they're listening to me you know so they don't expect me to actually play any one particular genre in fact if i play anybody else's song they get annoyed they really? like now if you want to listen to your music which is the reason why we are here it's like good, okay so but then you've really exploded i i i was looking at your twitter feed and your music and the comments on your youtube videos i mean people just love you what is this sort of success feel like ah i'm as surprised as anyone else i never thought my music will actually work um, because it's not film music it's not even underground it's like right in the middle uh, but surprisingly it worked and i feel the reason why it works is because uh, it has the indianness which was always kind of missing like i try and like when i compose music i prefer to make like simple music as much as uh, i possibly can even if it's complicated i try and sort of present it in a very simple way either with the arrangement of the song or uh, how the melodies are basically structured in the song but is the attention um, overwhelming do you feel pressure back in the days i remember my music wasn't working and i tried like everything uh, i did sound engineering for uh, gujarati films for gujarati folk music ghazals i did uh, film music uh, like remixes for hindi film music and nothing really worked but and i realized that the harder i was trying to sort of move away from my creativity from me being an artist uh the more difficult it was getting so my motto in life now is that i'm going to make music for myself i need to enjoy doing what i'm doing and uh if i will enjoy myself then automatically people will enjoy it because uh it's the same energy which will get translated so i don't feel pressured anymore do you think do you or do you have a sense when you create about how you're actually moving the needle no actually i have no idea i think in general no the whole scene is evolving quite fast as compared to how it was back in the days and i just happen to be in the forefront um because the style of music is very different and it's fresh and it's new uh but there are lots of other guys who are doing really really good music uh like there's this mc rapper called divine who's doing really really cool stuff this guy called nazi who's doing really good stuff this guy called rithvis who's doing really good stuff it's good for the scene see like if you win awards or you're getting appreciation it's good for the scene i will come and i will go you know but for me my stuff didn't work uh, at all because there was no infrastructure there was no scene there was no uh, audience and now there is you know so i want to make sure that more and more people get to listen to this music more and more people understand what's going on and appreciate the music and music stays fresh and it'll slowly move into like all different directions as well he also said that the reason you're important is is because you break class barriers in your audience oh, yeah. <laughs> you know i found that very interesting because actually that's what bollywood does too yeah it breaks class barriers yeah. like deep down inside we are all 
इंडियंस एंड वी लव इंडियन थिंग्स मुझे भी जलेबी पसंद है मुझे भी आलू टिक्की पसंद है और दूसरे इंडियन को भी पसंद होगी यू नो एंड माई म्यूजिक इज़ वेरी इंडियन द मेलिडीज आर वेरी इंडियन द ड्रम्स आर वेरी इंडियन यू नो इट हैज़ अ टाइनी बिट ऑफ अ इलेक्ट्रॉनिक टच टू इट Like I, we launched our album at uh, the Ganesh. Vis- you were on the back of a truck, yes. yeah. Yeah, and there's some. I was told there's like forty, fifty thousand people over there, and I wasn't playing like the regular Bollywood music over there. I was playing my music. They were happy, dancing, enjoying, jumping. They were elderly people, kids, uncles and aunties, and boys and girls. Like lots and lots of people in their houses, like they're giving flying kisses and thumbs up and everything. It's like this is pretty cool. And to the flip side, I played into like a very Posh, very rich Delhi club, and I get the same response from them as well. How do you create? Or oh then you know, what is your process? Do you actually like writers say that you have to write for a few hours every day? Like it's just three hours. Do you do you have a process like that? No, not at all. Actually, uh, if I'm not inspired enough to write, I don't sit and do anything. And um, I play a little bit of a keyboard, but just a little bit. So for me, I need to. get inspired by something could be films or could be anything you know and uh, when that happens my ideas just like flow very fast so i if i'm sitting in front of a computer i'll start my camera and i'll start recording my ideas instantly you know so i have hundreds of such ideas which i record and then i go through each one of the idea and i see which one is really good which one is interesting and if i find something interesting then i start working on it you know But it needs. I need to get inspired. Like for example, Gangs of Azipur. When I saw it for the first time, I was blown away. It's like, how can one think like this? You know, how can you make a film like this? How, how does it come in, come into your mind? Each and every character, each and every dialogue, everything is so precise and so Indian. You know, and that inspired me. Do you have a love hate relationship with Bollywood, or do you? I know you enjoy Hindi film music. You've talked about liking Kalyanji Anandji and, yeah. and Lakshmi Kanth Pyare Lal, the greats, Madan Mohan. Yeah. I like the older Bollywood music quite a lot. Uh, I'm not saying the newer stuff is not good. The newer stuff is uh, sometimes very repetitive, repetitive in terms of uh, arrangement, repetitive in terms of melody, in terms of idea. And I can understand, like back in the days, the amount of films which were made were lesser. You know, so one could focus ideating, focus on uh, thinking who's going to be the right singer. The process is not the same anymore. You know, uh, there's a added pressure, and the inv- involvement of uh, non-creative people is also quite high now. If something becomes really big, then everyone else around just wants to replicate that and make money on top of that. But nobody wants to innovate. Nobody wants to like find uh, newer ideas, new people to work with. If one singer's voice is working, then he's going to sing all the songs in all the films, and that same scale, that same chord structure, the same sort of music style so that's what i don't like uh, but saying that i don't mean that it's bad in a way there's some stuff which is really really incredible uh, what do you like i i like uh, remansa's music it's really interesting always fresh always new um i love uh, what vishal datlani is doing it's really really cool stuff i don't know how he comes up with like he's one guy who's like he can write a song with pentagram which is as banging as writing uh i can't remember the name of that song but that uh rithik roshan and katrina kaif song which was bang 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 yeah and he told me he write wrote that song in two and a half three minutes while he was in the shower like dude how can you come up with like such cool ideas instantly and is it frustrating to watch um, this sort of big kind of giant industry kind of just steamroll everything else in the country is that is no, that annoying no it doesn't bother me at all to be honest with you the thing is that people like me will have to come out and create the industry bollywood just didn't happen last night It's many many years back people have like given their life and energy and love into it which is the reason why it's so big right now you know uh that same process has to happen again you know for the indie for music. you yeah. yeah for everyone unfortunately it couldn't happen for uh, classical music to that level but i think for dance music it's not that big a deal it'll happen at some point in fact i feel that in next 5 years are very crucial not just for uh independent music in india but also for independent films in india you know you know i had asked uh, rehman about his creative process and he said that uh, um, a, a tune has to come like uh, the breeze 
that uh, shakes the leaves on a tree. He said, it has to be as effortless as that. And I was like, yeah, that's great. But what if it doesn't come? Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, he said, no, you can't force it because yeah. you can't shake a tree and make the leaves move. Yeah. Uh, so I said, so what do you do? And he said, I pray. And if it's really bad, then I fast. Uh, do you ever get like a creative block? Uh, I don't slog too much, to be honest with you. Like, uh, I just finished my tour and my gig time is over. And now I'm going to relax. First month, I'm not going to work. I'm just going to relax, watch lots of movies, spend time with my family, spend lots of time with my son. And uh, they'll help me forget about music for a bit. And I'll, You have to forget. I have to forget about music. It's not my life. And uh, I want to be the audience. I want to appreciate Consume. everything. Yeah. You know, like, I want to see my son grow in front of me. I want to have, like, a conversation with my wife and have that moment with them, you know, and be able to see a movie and appreciate it and have be in the zone basically, you know. And then you get inspired because life is moving effortlessly and it's going in the direction that you want it to go. And uh, so I'm not going to work for another four or five months. And within those four or five months... Four or five I'm months you don't work? No. At all? At all. So I like you... Anything. But you're listening to music but you're not creating anything? I am creating because creation is effortless. That happens because that's how I am. So when you say work, you mean you're not performing? You're not, I'm not going out? I'm not performing. I'm not doing any paid projects. So I'm not writing music for uh, any documentaries or radio jingles or not doing any shows at all. So then those four or five months which I'll have, I can ideate, I can relax, I can sit under the tree, eat a mango, just drink tea, relax, and I'll even go out so there's ample... So there are trees. There. Yeah, <laughs> so lots of trees. Yeah. So that's my process and if the idea is not coming then I'm trying too hard, so I just relax. I work even lesser than that then. So that's my process actually. The thing is that if you force this thing then it's not going to happen. It has to happen effortlessly. So I try and be around very like-minded people, very positive people. And your family is really involved also, I mean, your wife oh, yeah. is, is so critical to your identity as an artist and, yeah. you know, her designs are just spectacular. Oh, awesome. uh, is, are, those, are those sort of collaborative ideas or does she do it by herself? Everything is collaborative, actually. Even my music is not just completely me. It comes from Smriti as well. Um, and she's brutal in terms of like, she'll give me the most honest feedback. Uh, once I remember for the last album which we released, I was making a song. And uh, sometimes as an artist, as an audience, you listen to a song and you get inspired so much that you want to more or less replicate that, you know. So I got into that zone and I was trying to more or less replicate that particular bit which got stuck in my brain. And she was like, what are you trying to do? Is this, you're trying to write music for a film or you're trying to sound like that particular guy? You've, you're not yourself, you know. She was very honest about it and I completely scraped that idea off. And then I wrote another song. Um, with this girl called Avneet Khurmi. She's a singer from uh, Chandigarh. I wrote this song called Aja. And uh, I ended up using my son's voice also on it. And while I was making the song, I probably cried like 100 times. Why? I don't know. I mean, uh, 